you to listen up here. There's less than two weeks left for you to win Ken Block's very own Ford Focus ST. Yes, it's real. This is not CGI. We're not that techie. Entering is simple. For every dollar you spend at Hoonigan.com, gets you one entry into this giveaway. You have to do nothing else. Don't miss out on your opportunity to own one of Ken Block's very own cars. You win a car, we lose a car, and you know what that means? Room for more cars. So, head on over, hoonigan.com, because there's only two weeks left. On me, let me get in the video mode. Lewis, what are, what are you doing? What is this? Shooting video? What? Nice shirt, by the way. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. Los Pollos Hermanos? Yeah. I, I kind of feel like this looks like a, um, a sketchy location where we would have uh, some uh, cooking going on. Some of that. Some, some of that. Cooking? <laughs> crystals? Yeah. What's up, guys? Larry Chen here. Welcome to another episode of Hoonigan Autofocus. Today, we're focusing on a car that has a very interesting motor swap. We got Mike here, the owner. What's up? How's it going? How are you? Good. Thanks for bringing out your ride. Of course, I'm glad to show it off. All right, so uh, we're driving the Supra and then Mike's driving alongside of us. And I hear some interesting noises that I normally don't hear from a car that looks like this. What? <laughs> so what is this? What did it start life as? It started life as a uh, 67 Porsche 912. Um, I had traded uh, my dad's 57 Chevy Bel Air that he had gave me which was a rust bucket. But uh, so I got it as a 67. It was uh, like a light blue, I had like a non-matching motor. I didn't even look for the trans and uh, it just needed a lot of work. So how long ago was this? It had to have been 12, 13 years ago. So back then the prices of the 912s, they haven't really gone up, right? I mean, the right. 911s were just starting to creep up a little bit. Right. So, right. I mean, cause now to find one similar to this condition, it would be so expensive yeah. and people would be so upset at you for modifying it. <laughs> right, right, right. But so, you essentially you saved this car. This was basically right. going to the junkyard if you didn't actually dig into it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. There was a lot of rust repair. Um, there was a lot of work. It was non-matching. Um, it just needed a lot of work. It was really worn. You, it didn't have an original motor, and what did you do? You swapped in a different motor, right? Right. So the, uh, the motor that came with it was an industrial 356 motor. I looked up the code, it was a 72901, and it was marine application. It was for the Porsche motor, for a boat motor they made back in the 50s. So I didn't feel too bad after going through three, set, three different sets of carburetors. Couldn't get it to run right, and even when it was running good, it was like 50 horsepower. I could barely get to go 70 miles an hour. So, so what? How many liters was that motor? I think it was like a 1.2 or 1.6, somewhere in there. I didn't even bother to dig into it after finding it was industrial. It wasn't even the 912 motor that was bigger, like a two liter or a 1.8 or something that was better. Um, so what so would have power. come with this? Was this uh, actually uh, a 1.8 or? I think it's a 1.8. I'm not 100% sure, but um, yeah, it was just, just a standard 912 motor in 67. Um, nothing special. Um, but yeah, I wanted to keep, the, keep it in the family. So I went ahead and did a swap. All right, so pop the, pop the trunk here. So you can get a little visual there, but there you go. Oh, it's just a bunch, it's just an intercooler. It's just a huge intercooler. Whoa, okay, all right. So it is still a flat motor. Correct. So what's the motor in here? What is it exactly? So after some, uh, you know, some contemplating with my brother and I, I had always wanted a 914 with a Subaru motor. Uh, when Renegade Hybrid started, I was so excited to get a 914 and I stumbled across a 912. So. Um, I always wanted the Subaru style or even a 2.5 RS and um, after contacting Renegade about doing a swap for the 912 or 911, they said no, it can't be done and my heart was about broken. But about six months to a year after, um, you know, we had dove into the car and were trying to get it run right, um, I found a guy, um, a friend of mine named Ron in Alameda, he had done this swap on an early small wheelbase Porsche. Mm -hmm. so, with his you know, guidance and his uh, 
version, if he would have done it again, what would he have changed? We went ahead and made some of those changes on this version. So this is actually one of the most sought out motors for Subaru heads here in the US, right? I believe so. This is the EJ207 uh, Spec C motor. So this is with the, the VF36 twin scroll turbo, uh, revs to eight, you know, better internals. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a higher dollar motor. In 2005, they had a Subaru STI um, version in Japan, uh, but they made the Spec C only in Japan. And that one came with this special motor. And it was a two liter instead of the US version, which is a 2.5. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. This is definitely the centerpiece. Okay, so that's what I'm hearing. It's so loud because it's basically just like right there. Wow, okay. It's actually pretty shoehorned in here. So originally it came with a flat four and then you put a flat four back into it. Right, so we wanted to keep it somewhat, you know, homage to Porsche and a flat four 912, um, it just seemed right. Subaru swap just seemed right. So uh, fit pretty well. Uh, we had a couple of concerns with keeping the power down. So with the standard 901 transmission, we were afraid that the transmission wouldn't be able to hold the power. So we did make a modification and buy a 915 trans in order to uh, hold the 300 horse. Oh, wow, incredible. Oh man. All right, so let me just take a look at under here. Wow, so this is a real driver's car. Like you've put quite a bit of miles on this thing since you've done this swap, huh? Yeah, so you'll notice on there, there's some wear and tear. Um, so I recently did the Baja Targa, California with the group down in Mexico. And if you really want to put your car to the test, do the Baja Targa. Um, but yeah, we were able to put a lot of miles on. Uh, I've done the coast with the one and the 101 in the car. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a driver, it's not a garage queen. Oh, okay, so let's go over the rest of it. Tell me about the wheels. So the wheels are uh, ATS classic, they call them cookie cutters. Um, they're not very desirable, but they are um, aluminum. Uh, they are Porsche OEM, um, standard on many cars. So these are 15 by sevens all around. Um, as you can see, to do that with a short wheelbase, we had to uh, add the rear flares from an early 70s car. Um, but we wanted to keep a little bit of homage to Subaru, so I went with a BBS Gold Centers. I love gold! And they look, they look fantastic. Yeah, they look pretty cool, I like that. I mean, you you just have a couple touches that you've done to the outside to kind of, I guess, tell everyone that it actually has a Subaru motor. Especially, of course, your license plate is hilarious. 912 R STI. I love that you put the dash in there. And then, of course, on the the lid or duck. I guess you would call this a, a duck lid, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you ducktail. put ducktail. You put a two liter little little badge right there that is so I, I love the little attention to detail really good job appreciate on it. it so yeah this is really a garage build uh brother and my and i in uh in my brother's garage built this um you know over about five years time and uh you make you make mistakes along the way you break stuff and you try again and uh yeah this is our final version we kind of got it running so let's let's finish the outside here anything else that you've done to the front this is pretty yeah. interesting here. Yeah. So the front, you can see we have like a type RS uh, sort of front end. Um, everything's carbon fiber or fiberglass. So carbon, fiber, fiber. Um, and you can see from the front splitter on the bottom, that's actually off a of NASCAR. I think it's called Turgis. Wait, actual off of, like a real NASCAR? And it's shaking big time. Yeah, it was real NASCAR. Um, they used to sell for cheap on eBay, like a hundred bucks. And it was like another foot on each side of my car, how wide it was. So we were able to cut it in half, split it, rebond it, and uh, it makes for a perfect splitter for the car. It's funny because you can see where it used to mount to <laughs> some stock car. Some, <laughs> some stock NASCAR. Some left turning car. Yep. Wow. It's perfect, it's really it actually, durable. How, like, how did you guys cut it so perfect then? Uh, it just formed really well. We cut it right out of the center. So we took some off the left and right, rebonded, and yeah, you can see it lined up with our bumper really well. It's pretty thick, it's made to rub. Uh, not afraid to scrape when I need to. Huh. It's crazy what you guys have done to this thing. One of my favorite things about old school Porsches is how they, I guess that's, <laughs> so that's coolant now then. That's correct, that okay, is now a water line. Normally it would be an oil line going from the front to the back. Okay. Correct.
Correct. Ah. So uh, we went uh, both sides. We went with our water system. Um, we copied this uh, off the inspiration of Wevo, built a car called PVX uh, for Pete. And uh, Wevo did the same sort of thing. They put uh, front radiators behind the headlights and a GT3 cup motor. Well, we kind of copied that idea and did everything in aluminum because we were just sick of rust after getting the car. So no more rust. Okay, so because uh, normally uh, when you're building like a, a old school Porsche, it would just only be one side of oil lines. Right. So I think it would be the passenger side dual oil lines going to a cooler behind the headlight bucket. Um, we now have, a, you know, one and a quarter inch aluminum pipe on each side, a to and from. Yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> it actually, I, I mean, that's kind of the thing is it matches that look. Like I love the theme that you guys went with this car. Thank you. Wow. I have so many questions about everything <laughs> in here. Um, let's, let's start with the gauges. What is this? Did you custom make these gauges? Sure, no. So these actually are the gauges that came with the car originally. Um, the only modification that we made, as you can see, is from the tachometer. Um, we had that done by, I believe, Hollywood Speedometer and uh, got it to match with the Subaru. Uh, you can see from the left, you have the water temp, no more oil temp. It says oil temp, but it is water temp <laughs> um, and oil druke. Um, oil druke is pressure, um, so that is actually standard. Uh, yeah, and everything else is from, the, from a 67. I mean, because this red line, like, like that reads correctly for this motor then? It does. 8,000 is the standard for the EJ207 Spec C. <laughs> that is so, I, I'm so glad you did that. That's, yeah, it looks, great. Hollywood Spinometer did a great yeah, job on that. Yeah. I love all the little touches too, like the... the... So the, uh, yeah, stereo delete. Yeah. We love the door cards so much and we wanted to keep it lightweight. We have a beautiful noise in the back of the car. Uh -huh. So why not just listen to that? Yeah, you kind of went with that whole RS theme. Yeah. Yeah. I like the seats too. Thanks. Yeah, the seats. So I had those completed by TRE Motorsports. Uh, I had them custom made um, and designed. And uh, yeah, they're the, they're, <laughs> you got to feel comfortable in the car. And uh, yeah, that's where I went big and made, made sure those were comfortable. The rear is really nice. The half cage, yeah, super the, clean. The custom half cage. Uh, so I actually had that custom built, as you can see from Evil Genius. Uh, they're actually in Sacramento. The owner of Evil Genius actually does all of the welding cages for lemons racing. Uh, some of you guys might know him, John, a uh, really great guy. Uh, he actually has a 912, so he was able to help me out. Turned out great. Is there anything in the front that we can like, take a look at? Of course. There's a lot of little things about this, and, and which by the way, Mike, I love the fact that you left a lot of patina on certain parts of the car, um, and certain things you updated completely. Like obviously you guys painted it, and it looks very clean, but of course, since you, it's a driver's car, right. it's kind of worn in, which is, you know, it kind of matches the look of the rest of the car. Exactly, so you can see all the window trim is all original and scuffed up, uh, the headlight trim, the horn grills, the wheels. Um, yeah, it just kind of matches with that outlaw look. Yeah. It's driven. All right, let's see it, Frank. Another motor. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's very clean. Yeah, so we uh, triangulated bracing on the front. Um, I got a full spare tire there and uh, just an RS carpet kit. Yeah, pretty standard, pretty clean. Yeah, no, it's really clean. Yeah, this, this is something that Elena likes to point out. Um, the fact that you have a, a lightweight, yeah, like a little, like, a little lightweight hood prop is very cool. Yeah. I like it a lot. So what do Porsche people think when they see this thing or when they hear it? Um, some of them are, are fans, they love it, um, but some of them are confused. And then once they figure it out, they either love it or hate it. There's no like in between. Yeah, it sounds so crazy. So yeah, I guess before last time I was with you, yeah. I think we added a second muffler. Cause oh, last time it was loud. Too loud. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So now I have like two mufflers. This is a muffler <laughs> that was a Magnaflow that we cut and shortened. And there's a muffler below that. And then you can see the uh, V-band below that. Um, for, for Seika, I add a third muffler. <laughs> Okay, so, so this, um, is this a stock turbo here? This is a stock VF36 turbo. It's just wrapped. Custom header, obviously equal length, 
uh, keeps that uh, kind of mysterious sound to it. So this uh, is not, you know, you, you drive it on rallies, you drive it on the street, but you also take it to the track. Yeah, so I've done a couple track days. I try to do autocross once a month, and which is why I have uh, some flat spotted tires on me right now. But uh, yeah, I've, I've gone to Button Willow um, and Seika with it so far, and it's, it's just performed great. What times does it run at Button Willow and Laguna Seca? Oh man, I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> Around two? two? One, 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 minute, <laughs> one minute 58. No, I, I, I don't know. Uh, no, I mean, I babied it and then like I scared myself and, and uh, spun it at Button Willow. Oh, so don't do that. So it got a little dusty and I felt a little bad. My baby got a little dirty. but. Um, no, I was, it was my first time with the track. I haven't been, ever been there before, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Very cool. All right. One minute, 59 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure this is such a handful to drive, too. Uh, rear engine, rear wheel drive, and plus it has three times the horsepower, maybe more, yeah. of what this originally had, right? Right. Uh, on, a good day. on a good day <laughs> with with the original motor i couldn't imagine it it made that much more than 100 horsepower if no, that if that no. if that i know 914 two liters make about 100 horsepower so there you go there you go um probably less yeah so did you have a chance to dyno it uh i did so i actually dynoed it dynoed it here in long beach at churches and uh, came out to 300 horsepower to the wheel and about 260 or 270 foot pounds of torque our friends at iWire will hate if I don't mention them. Yeah. They actually helped you out with this car. Recently, I think the Hoonigan Autofocus channel has basically turned into the iWire channel <laughs> because we feature so many of their cars, but it's kind of cool for them to do things that are not Subaru, still Subaru, but not yeah. Subaru. Agreed, Brian, Brian helped me out. So the contact I made with Brian was from uh, my friend Ron. He had built that early the early 912 with the first swap, uh, he had contacted Brian first and uh, gave me the recommendation. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was great. It was really a bit, really much a plug and play harness um, and cut wires the length where I need. Uh, it worked out really well. So it actually still runs the stock ECU then from this motor? From the motor, yeah. Um, if you want to take a look at that, that's right back here. It's a nice. Uh, Don't mind if I do. It's a nice install from version version two from from Ron. Oh, it's like this whole plate that you have over here. Right. It's tucked in underneath. Yeah. I mean, because it doesn't make sense for you to move it all the way to the front, right? Right. Um, I guess you could, but I wanted it, you know, safe and secure um, and just easy, accessible, etc. Right. And you don't really see it anyways because it's under the seat. Right. Yeah. Well, you got everything here. That is a great install i love it very cool well thank you so much for bringing this build out can we take it for a little ride let's. a little spin let's do it yeah yeah right. let's do it my favorite part <laughs> <laughs> yeah bless here i can drive forward <laughs> there you go <laughs> i didn't want to do the ken block kick usually when oh. i get stuck on my car oh. i just kick the door yeah and then it comes back so i don't want to do that to your car please don't this car is too beautiful and too perfect i love your stereo system by the way <laughs> you like that <laughs> it's removable <laughs> oh that sound is so weird oh my goodness <laughs> this is some this Ronnie? is some serious jdm voice subaru vape Row stuff right here. <laughs> this is it. All right, this thing is awesome. <laughs> That's so loud. The, it's the, only just loud the when you want it to is, be. Is, is so good. I mean, the actual noise coming from the engine and the exhaust noise is not that bad. It's really manageable. But it's a little puppy wow. dog. It, it, it's really nice. I really like it a lot. It's a little puppy dog. Yeah. She'll play when she wants to. The interior is really nice too. I really like what you do with the interior. Appreciate it. Yeah, we try to keep it clean. Um, we have a painted dash. You can see we didn't originally plan for that, but the painter decided to paint it and it turned out decent. So we just kept it. I mean, cause when you strip these down, this is like part of it. 
pretty much, right? This right. is part of the whole chassis. Like you, can, you don't really take it out. Right. Yeah. That's that's body. That's chassis. Yeah. Yeah. It's all it's all built in. We can see we felt it, and then we added this nice lip. This is actually aluminum piece that we riveted on uh -huh. to keep the sun out of the gauges. So, what uh, suspension do you run? Because it's actually pretty nice. Uh, so the suspension is a 74 911 front end um, with you know M calipers. Um, and then we have Carrera T-bars front and rear, and uh, you know the M calipers up front and a standard 912 brakes in the rear. <laughs> All the way up to eight. <laughs> wow. I had the Subaru behind me. Yeah. Uh, he's like, oh my god, another Subaru. <laughs> he's gonna try to catch me. Oh, this thing is too cool. Play. I absolutely love it. There he comes. So yeah, it's a it's a grocery getter when you want it to be. Yeah. It's got um, it's got a uh, it's really tall fifth gear in it. So when you're on the highway, it really drops RPMs. It's not great for the track, but it's you know, like I said, I, I built this thing to drive. So you, did you actually re-gear it to get it to be a better highway cruiser? I did. So yeah, I did. I built. Um, my brother and I, we bought a, a custom fifth gear um, to, in order to really drop the RPMs down um, and install it ourselves. So, do you have an estimate on how many miles you've put on it since you've built it? Um, I don't. Uh, I mean, I've probably done, oh man, five or six oil changes at least. Um, and that's like, you know, one after Mexico. Uh, some tracks, some, uh, some autocrossing, um, and some highway driving up and down from the coast. I guess I'll go this way. Um, but you can see, you can see the wear of uh, the tire nicks and, you know, rock chips and slashes on the paint. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely been driven and uh, not afraid to be driven. All right, here we go. Driver switch. Woohoo! Wow, this thing is the, so cool. Just the uh, seat. So cool. <laughs> oh, these pedals are, are, I forget, driving old school 911. It like... They go down. Yeah, <laughs> that goes down. It's like a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah. Nice. Already, I haven't even moved. Shifts like a tractor. Yeah, I but. like it. So was it really hard to kind of get this transmission to work? Uh, good question. So, a little bit of customization to change up the trans to a 70s or 75, basically, uh, transmission. Um, we needed to keep it um, somewhat early to have the mechanical speedo. Right. Um, but uh, to make it fit, we had to bump up the tunnel a little bit for the starter. And then, um, in running that, we also had to uh, change out some stub shafts. Uh, the stub uh, transmission stub shafts to 914 stub shafts and um, then we can actually use the 901 cv joint out to the the rear oh, suspension talk about a hybrid of parts from everything huh <laughs> yeah there's a little yeah. bit of everything on this car it's a little japanese a little german yeah a little this a little that you know uh, a little frankenstein yeah yeah, it's great already. I'm just just cruising, you know, and and it's already just. I couldn't. I can't imagine you pushing this ten tenths <laughs> on the track. Like, yeah, that's that's what autocross is for. Um, a lot of people may not know this, but I learned how to drive fast, you know, doing autocross. Nice. And um, for sure, yeah, that that's where you get to actually push eleven tenths. In yes. fact to drive over your limit and then you can bring it back. That's right. That's where you really learn your car. Yeah. This is great. I love it. <laughs> that sound is so good. <laughs> that sound is too good. It's a it's a smile factor. Yeah. It's just it's a feel good. I love it. Oh man. I just and this I can't thing, get over it. Yeah, and the, so the great good. thing is, it's power when you want it, and then reliability and you know gas saver when you don't. So, on the highway, I can get around 30 miles a gallon. I've done the math. That's great, and it's fantastic. I love it. It's a modern power plant because what else could you do from the Porsche side to update this power plant? I mean, can you right. think of something? Uh, I, I don't. I mean, I don't think anything really exists. 
it, right? new Porsche motors. You can go 996 twin turbo or something, but yeah, but Buku that, bucks and that might be. It might just be too much for this chassis. Yeah, it is small like, wheelbase. You're right. And, and keeping the leaderage down, mm -hmm. keeping it still two liter, high revving, mm -hmm. lightweight, relatively right. Yeah. So it comes in to around 2,000 pounds because it's all uh, fiberglass. You actually weighed it. Yeah, I, uh, truck scales, um, nothing official, but you know, it came in around 2025 20, or something like that, or 20, 2030. There it is. Wow. <laughs> Sir, please. <laughs> oh my God. Larry gets on it. Well, I, I mean, like, it, it's climbing so fast, I'm afraid. <laughs> I have to shift early. It's got a built in rev limiter, so oh. you won't hurt it, but Man. yeah. That's the thing is everyone, all right guys, I know you guys like to complain that I don't push it hard in other people's cars, but there are other people's cars, it's not my car. <laughs> That's right. You know, I just want to try it and, and just kind of maybe convey the feeling of what it's like to drive this wonderful build. Um, just, just incredible, really, really incredible. Very good job. Thank you. I like it. Yeah, the great thing about it too for tuning is it's all open source tuning. So I can plug into my ODB2 adapter, bring up my laptop, and just get everything I need off the, the motor and engine yeah. while it's running. And so I can, uh, I can data log uh, while I'm on the track. I just love that. It's just, it's just, this is what this chassis needed. Saving, which you did. <laughs> yes, number one. And also an update in terms of emissions, in terms of just speed, everything. Like, this is just so cool. I can't get over that. It's like, it's it's like so much escaping air. Yeah. Just, oh my gosh, the volume of air this thing moves. They could have totally rebuilt like a, a blow uh, bypass valve instead of a blow off valve, but it, the smile on your face is just priceless. So yeah, yeah. it really had is. to go for it. Wow, you you uh, you did it. You built something amazing. <laughs> I do have to say. This does a lot. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, no, it's really cool. What's this guy doing? He's reversing, I guess. Okay, amigo. <laughs> now going forward again. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to drive fast. Just, just, no. just cruising is, is is perfect. Mm -hmm. What a ride! What a ride! I, I also, I, I just keep going back to the gauges. I love the fact that you updated them. Yeah, cleaned them up and yeah, made the tachometer work like it should. And it's it's a beautiful thing. Well, Mike, thank you so much for bringing this out for us to shoot. I had a lot of fun driving it. And uh, this is uh, really cool. I wish more of these existed. I feel like this is kind of a thing that people need to do. <laughs> Put these two liter flat four Japanese motors, update some of these cars that were meant for the junkyard, you know? this. Who knows, this could have been rotting away, but you saved it and you made it something amazing. So yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Larry, this is yeah. a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, save your cars. <laughs> save your cars! <laughs>